Would you rather get shit slapped in the face while trying to subdue a psych patient or have to give a bed bath to a patient with bed bugs? As much as I don't want to get shit on me, those bed bugs like give me like when I cringe when there's like critters walking around. Mm -hmm. Fudge, man. But in that case, I hate I hate bed bugs so much. I think it's just as nasty. Like I'll just take the the shit slapped. Oh, Ooh, I gotta go. Hey. I've been working, so them please don't hit my phone. Yeah. I'm in my zone, bro. Just leave me alone. Hey. Was on the road, but I swear I'm coming home. Hey. Now the drinks on me, I think we need a toast. Hey. See, I did it for me. Now my old friends calling, told them nothing's for free. Told me time is money, dog. Swear I paid on my fees. I was starving for this game. Now my fan they can't eat. Welcome everyone. Another episode of the Cup of Nurses podcast here with your hosts, Matt and myself, Peter. First off, I want to thank everyone for listening, for tuning in, for the viewership. It means a lot to us. It is the beautiful month of April, so Matt and I have our new merch on its April launch. We both have the Nurse Gains shirts on right now. We also have a Nurse Fit as well uh, on the coupleofnurses.shop website. Make sure you snag those. We also have the March ones from last year, just as cool, just as comfortable. We do have something coming up here in the next couple months, ideally, called Pronto, P-R-N-T-O. You can check it out on prontohealth.com. It's an app that we are developing that's going to cater towards the healthcare profession, especially to the job seekers. We want to make things more transparent, more easier when it comes to seeing how much these travel contracts I should go for, as well as these permanent positions to make sure that you're always getting the best deal uh, for your money. I remember we are on YouTube. Our videos are now on Spotify. Uh, so check those out. If you guys are on Spotify, definitely download it. If you haven't seen us on YouTube, definitely check us out on YouTube. And our site is currently up and running uh, with its latest touches. That's coupleofnurses.com uh, for all our blog posts. Literally every show note that we have, every episode that we have, it's on there. A lot of cool nursing stuff on there as well. As well as we are frontlinewarriors.com, our sister site that has more of our mindfulness, spiritualness, consciousness kind of topics on their blog post. We're going to start building that to a bigger and wider audience here shortly in the future. But right now, if you want to read over some blog posts, has have it has a lot of cool and interesting content just to make you a, a better person because man, and I have been on this giant life journey and we've learned a lot that you want to share with everybody around us. But what's up, Matt? Hell yeah, I like that intro, bro. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone, that downloads the episodes and keep on coming back and listening to the show. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Would You Rather, Nursing Edition. So we're going to have a broad of questions of scenarios in the hospital and life and see what Peter and I would do in these scenarios. So it's going to be a fun, fun episode for those listening. Yeah, we've been nursing for about like five years now, uh, maybe a little bit, little bit more. And we always have those thoughts like in a shower or whenever like, Hey, you know, we would ask each other this. Hey, if, if you were given these two situations, which one would, would you pick? And it's always it's always a tough tough choice because a lot of stuff that we mentioned here, like would you rather, we've we've been we've been through and it's uncomfortable and it sucks. But it's like always humorous and fun to take take a look at and kind of poke fun of uh, nursing and like the stuff that we actually have to deal with. Exactly. So let's go with the first one. Would you rather do an admission or a discharge? I think I would rather do an admission, just because. I have never done a discharge, so I don't know exactly what goes into it. And admissions, I feel like it's just very repetitive. And what I'm thinking is the best admission is an admission like post code or admission that comes up from ER that's already intubated because they can't answer anything. Uh, the family's not there. You can't really ask anybody any questions. So it's a very, very easy discharge uh, admission. So I'll definitely choose admission. What about you? Right. Plus, you're working on your own pace. Mm -hmm. And if you have a patient that's ready to go home, alert and oriented, they're going to have that anticipation of, oh, is my ride here? Mm -hmm. Are they coming? Are you ready? And then you're running around trying to like print out the packet and making sure they get all the meds, they get the belongings. And I think it's more of a cluster to the discharges. So I'm going to go with the admission as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. And my last patient was being discharged. And his ride was supposed to come at 730. So, you know, I got his paperwork already. Everything was already done by, by day shift. Um, all I had to do was just make sure he's safe, do the round of vitals, all that kind of stuff. And it didn't come to like nine. So it's like, then I was like, oh crap, well, I got to give these guys eight o'clock meds now. So it's definitely uh, a nuisance. Yeah. I don't mind uh, discharges to like 
a nursing home and the ambulance people come in and just kind of sign something you're good to go but when it comes to alert and oriented patients that are going home it's tedious and i've only done it a handful of times mm. clearly where i see we just admit not discharge definitely so matt would you rather work a 24-hour shift or oversleep and be late for your shift so honestly if i overslept to work i would have so much anxiety waking up and going to work knowing that i'm late it would bother the hell out of me that i'd rather just do this 24-hour shift oh yeah same exact way because like when you wake up late and you're late to work it's just like you said, you're super anxious, you have this anxiety, and then plus now you're making the next person wait and stay over. So it's like you're screwing yourself over and you're screwing over the person that's waiting to give you a report. And Matt and I are both nice individuals. And we know that if you show up late to work, guess what? You have a shorter night, which is a little bit more convenient. You don't have to work the 12 hours. You work like maybe 11 and a half or the 11, which is nice. But the people that we are, I think I would definitely do a 24-hour shift as well. Yeah, and the last time we were late was that uh, whole tire accident mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas, where we got a flat and one of us had to show up to work because we couldn't drag it on and both go go get the car rental. Yeah. And the manager made a good point. Oh, we can't have two bodies down. We got to, Somebody has to come into work, so the tow truck dropped you off. Yeah, yeah, because we were definitely thinking about, hey, we should both go. But then it was like, yeah, it makes complete sense. It's like one of our last days. What's a couple hours late, right? Right. So would you rather... Redo your nursing school program or high school? I think I would redo high school because now looking back at it, high school really did not matter. So I would probably be uh, more confident in high school and do a bunch of more sketchier shit. And I do not want to nursing school again. Like no it's way. Like the military, man. No way. I'm like good. four years of nursing school, like that stress and that anxiety, like that, that's the most stress I've ever been in my life. I got more stress in nursing school trying to pass than I have when a patient's coding. What about you? But high school for me, if I could go back, I would, I would take high school as a joke because if you, because like when you're in high school, like you think, oh, this is the world, like oh my god, like I, you know, like you're always overthinking stuff. You're a teenager. You're scared to do things. You're you're always like judging yourself based on how people th think about you. But when you look at it from like a bird's eye view, that's a perspective. None of that matters. And it would be cool knowing that in high school, uh, redoing it again. Yeah, like a nursing school is just straight drill, work, clinicals, homework, sleep repeat. Like it was a continuous cycle of just work versus and I, I went to the south side of Chicago. So uh, it was kind of slang. We're ditching school, didn't do homework, maybe cheating a little bit, kind of did school, do a doobie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, redoing that, I would not mind versus nursing school. Right, right. Okay. So good Matt, times, good times. would you rather be punched in the face or spit in the mouth. I would never tolerate getting spit in the mouth, yeah. bro. It's so disgusting. I'll take the damn punch, man. What, what about in a bedroom? Would you rather get punched in the face in a bedroom or spit in the mouth in a bedroom? You know, it's a little bit different. If I was doing the spitting, huh? Yeah, I mean, if I'm sexually attracted to, you know, her, then... And of course, I am probably am because she's in the bedroom to begin with. So I prefer that than getting put, clocked in the mouth by my partner there. <laughs> versus uh, i mean I, I got i got a crazy patient probably didn't uh clean his mouth for a couple of days maybe a week bro i really get punched in the face man yeah oh yeah for how about sure. you yeah definitely punch when it comes to the, the uh hospital wise definitely punch in the face yeah because like you said you don't know where that, where that mouth has been on a patient you know and they're, they're gross especially if it's like they've been intubated for like nine days or eight days or whatever and you and when you do an oral care you're like taking out that dry skin yeah i don't want that guy spin in my face uh, man yeah the plaque thing uh yeah. there was a there was a patient uh that had that uh cervical dystonia mm. and they had toothpaste like four or five different flosses man they're putting those nurses are putting work on that mouth man yeah. um so yeah i would just not um yeah yeah and, and, and i hate sputum to begin with even when something falls on my forearm sometimes i like i cringe a little bit it's yeah. like uh kind of came on there so just imagine next to your face Ugh. that's just nasty all right pd would you rather have a rude ungrateful patient or a patient with a difficult helicopter parent family member so i had i got i had to think about this one really really good um because i i've had both experiences I, i've had in hospital a very demanding family and i've also had a hospital a very demanding and rude patient but i would go with the i'd rather have the helicopter parent if i remember because when i had this family issue there came a point where i talked to my manager and then we manager and i both talked to our family and said hey 
the things that you're doing, the things you want us to do, they're taking time away from me to care for your loved one, which is the, the patient. This is why, why I'm here is what I get paid for. And I can't have you be, do, be doing this versus like if it's just a rude patient, that's always a dick. Like it's hard to stop that. It's a lot easier to stop that helicopter parent, that that annoying family member, than it is to stop a rude patient, because it just because like he's your patient. So, what are you gonna do? Like this is how he how he is. Versus a family, you can get security involved. You you can at least kick them out. A patient you can't kick out. Yeah. They gotta leave AMA. What about you, man? So for me, I was going to choose, or I am choosing, the ungrateful patient because. For some reason, I have like this thing like they, they give me a bad assignment, but I'm gonna be able to soften that dude up, and he kind of turns out to be okay with me. Uh, maybe I could give some PR on meds and put him to sleep. But if you have like a family member with anxiety of this patient being in the hospital, like that anxiety is just sometimes too much for the damn patient mm-hmm. family member. Like just in my ear doing this, doing that, and it just becomes draining. So I'll just deal with the. With ungrateful son of a bee, man. I'll give him some applesauce and to close the door. Here you go, bro. You're not happy? Cool, man. Me too. Yeah. That's good. So next time we have these issues, we can, we can switch, switch our pairs. Right. All right, Matt. So would you rather be a nurse on a cruise ship or a nurse at a music festival? I've never been on a cruise ship, so I don't know how that is. Right. And I know that the music festivals get rowdy. So honestly, it depends if you want the ex- crazy experience or you want the chill good time. Mm-hmm. Because I'm thinking, um, like, on a cruise ship, like, I'm thinking, like, hey, what would you do? I'm going to guess, like, any kind of GI issues, like, maybe vomiting, see people that are seasick, um, maybe some, like, GI issues, maybe some food poisonings or whatever. So that's what I'm thinking about the cruise ship. And when I think of festivals, uh, what comes to mind about. is probably drugs. Because there's been, like, two or three times where you and I went to music festival and we had a patient, not a patient, but a person, like, zapped on drugs, like, almost ODing on a, on a floor and vomiting. And it's like... So it's like, what would you rather deal with? I would rather deal with those kids that are ODing than than to deal with somebody that's probably vomiting or has stomach issues. On the cruise right? ship, yeah, yeah. Personally. Plus a music festival, just being a nurse there would probably be a fun time. Yeah, and you got the music there, so you're jamming. You're jamming out. There's a bunch of stuff happening. Uh, it's gonna Free become, water. It's going to become busy because you see how these patients sometimes roll in with the little mini ambulances honking. They're, they just look like crap. So probably you need an IV started right away, a bolus. Or whatever, so mm-hmm. that'd be a that'd be a good time. On but the then a cruise festival. ship, like cruise ship, you have is there like helicopters standard on a cruise ship? Because what if somebody gets severely injured? Because I'm thinking like acuity wise, been on one, right? Something like acuity wise, maybe you might see more acute stuff in a cruise ship when shit hits the fan. No, you definitely see more acute stuff. I think on a festival. Because I'm thinking like, what if like it's a really big emergency? Like at a festival, you have ambulance that could pick them up and ship them out. But on a cruise ship, if you're out, do they have like a helicopter there? It's interesting. I'll do the festival still either way, just because the music's there. They, they would probably definitely call for one. Mm. So let's go with the seventh one. Would you rather have coworkers love you and your manager hate you or your coworkers hate you and your manager love you? Hands down, I'd rather have my coworkers love me and my manager hate me. I ain't no snitch either. Yeah, I ain't no snitch. The fact, but like, <laughs> on a serious note, the, the fact is that is that you're you're a nurse, right? So you're surrounded by nurses, and you have a manager. They do management, so it's like I rather have my peers around me respect me and like me versus the manager because I'm a nurse. You know, if I was let's just say a nurse manager, and the same and it was the same question, would you rather have the nurse managers like you or your or your nurses like you? I would I would pick the nurse managers, but since I'm a nurse. I, and I work with nurses, I would rather have that because th- that's what I know. Right. Plus, if you work night shift, you don't see the managers right. at all. Like, you want to be cool with your coworkers and have a co- cohesive team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you would do the same thing or would you do the manager one? I would be a do the suck up, huh? I would do the coworkers, man. Mm-hmm. Where's Matt? Oh, he's in the manager's office. Okay. <laughs> Who's going in second? Is the one he snitched on, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> it's funny because, like, uh, back in UPS, like, uh, I was a favorite for uh, a couple of us who were loaders because we we're working hard, man. We always got pizza sometimes, man. They would always hate. <laughs> But hell yeah, man, I got some pizza on a cold dock, man. There you go. Uh, number eight, Matthew. Would you rather be ignorant and blissful or smart and never happy? Tough, right? That That is tough. But technically in life, we're chasing happiness. So I'd rather be ignorant and blissful. Because if I'm blissful, at least I have that feeling that I'm trying to um, acquire. Mm-hmm. But I'm ignorant. I get in my own way versus if i'm smart i got the damn analytical knowledge 
but my analytics cannot give me that emotion that I'm looking for. So you're always going to try to chase it and figure it out rationally, intelligently, but you're always going to be lacking it. So mm. I'd rather be blissful, bro. I'll do the opposite. I'd rather be uh, smart and never happy because the way I'm looking at it is that I'm smart, even though I'm never happy, the fact that I'm smart, at least I can maybe make some kind of an impact on the rest of the world that might help the world. But then again, I'm never able to help myself technically. But I feel like at least I'd be able to help somebody else and maybe make them happy instead of making myself kind of happy. Does that make, that make sense? Yeah. Kind of thing. Like I would just self sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. A self sacrifice. Yeah. Which um, if you you guys looked up like self sacrifice and did some self sacrifice research, there's like a happy medium. You, if you keep self sacrificing yourself, you're gonna lead to your own demise, and you're always gonna try to be like a people pleaser, and you're never going to ever be happy or achieve anything because you're always focusing on someone else's. Uh, kind of problems but but in this case i would rather be smart and uh and never happy just because i just because i guess in this situation at least i would know i would be able to make some kind of an impact compared to if i'm uh being being blissful was it dumb and blissful ignorant ignorant and blissful blissful, then like even though i might be happy but am i doing any kind of benefits like the society or the world you, you wouldn't really know right yeah. yeah, we're we're adding uh, more uh, details details into the question and it's, <laughs> trying to uh, rationalize our decisions. Right, we're <laughs> rationalizing, and it's hard because it's like yeah. just two uh, polar opposites technically, mm. and it's it's the duality here that's getting to us. So we want to like we try to try to rationalize that you know negotiating that fifty yeah. fifty here. So in the hospital, would you rather have a C diff patient or a GI bleed? So both are shit shows, no pun intended. But oh, damn. Uh, I would probably both smell. <sighs> yeah, both, both smell. Both smell bad. It's just like which one could you tolerate more? And there's like when you have a CDF patient, there there's poop coming out no matter what. And the GI bleed, there's poop coming out no matter what. I think I would do the CDF because you could put a, a flexi in a CDF patient, but you can't put a flexi in a GI pla- GI bleeding patient. At least that that's what I've I've been taught. Every time I had a GI bleed, and even though the dude was pissing out water or, or shedding out water, I couldn't put a put a put a thing in there, a flexi. Even when it comes to the care of a GI GI bleed, it's so much more task heavy, so much more involved. Mm-hmm. Where one, there, there's blood coming out most of the time mm-hmm. for the patients. You need multiple IVs because there are a protonics drip, octaride, Maybe fluids, bicarb, those, yeah. bicarb. You're gonna be hanging blood, and the difficulty of the patient. I'd rather just have the C diff. You're giving mm-hmm. some antibiotics. It's nasty as hell. It's like. Who knows what kind of poop? I forgot the consistency of it, but it's liquid, liquid, liquid yeah. and loose. At least like in this case, I could just like, you know, triple chuck, make like a little blanket over her and mm. she'll poop and I'll change her every couple hours or so and make it work versus that GI bleeder, man. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up, brought up like a task because I, because I was like looking at what's more disgusting, and, but the GI bleeder is definitely a lot more work than C diff. hundred percent. Oh yeah. Like 10 X more work. So number 10 here, unless you have anything else to say about the GI bleeder. Nope. Nope. Number 10, would you rather do the laundry or the dishes for the hospital? I know what I throw into the laundry sometimes, so I'd rather do those damn dishes mm. because sometimes in the laundry you're throwing away a gown that's soiled, that has crap on it. Yeah, just just knowing what I clean up, man, I'll do dishes any day. Plus, it's therapeutic a little bit. I just kind of wash the dishes, make mm. the time go by. But throw a curb on here. Did you know that it was blue bags? There, they um when you put them in water, they 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 um disappear. You could say the blue bags. Disappear? The blue bags, yeah. Wow. So it's like the laundry people don't actually take out the towels and stuff from the bag. They throw the bag in in the machine. Uh huh. That's how it was at least in my hospital in Chicago. Dishes, baby, every day. Dishes. <laughs> See, it depends on on the bags, but then dishes would be. Yeah, true. I would definitely do dishes too. Uh, thinking about it, I pop some AirPods in. There's less smelly. Yeah, I'll do definitely dishes, regardless if if the the bag dissipates in water or not. I'll definitely do dishes. And I think like I do this pretty quick. They have a dishwasher, right? Yeah, they hmm. must. And plus, like, how nasty can dishes be versus what you might right. see there? It's just it's like, like there's shit on dishes, right? Like the worst thing that could happen is a patient just spits something back out onto the dish. Okay, yeah. well I'm gonna take a fork and pop it into the trash and wash this damn thing. So right. Yeah, plus, like, how often do we do dishes? You know, it's not like I do laundry and you're, like, shitting your pants or, or Luke every single day and you're, like, cleaning up diarrhea and, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so funny. Yeah, good point, good point. Good All right, Pete. So would you rather be the strongest man on earth 
or the smartest man on earth? I would be the smartest man on earth. That's an easy one. Yeah, yeah. Hand, hands, like that intellect out. shit. Yeah, what about you? Definitely the smartest man because like just because I'm strong and I can't lift it, at least I know how to negotiate mm. four or five people to do the job for me to do the lifting right, and I could right. be the strongest <laughs> man too with yeah. my intellect. So yeah. And I'm thinking like, yeah, if I'm so smart, then I could probably figure out a way to eventually get my ass into a gym and become the strongest person, you know? So, so it's like intellect over anything. Yeah. 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 It's just one of those questions where it's just like, if you really want to want to answer like a smart ass, you can answer like a smart ass, you know? Is that what we just did? Yeah. That's what we did for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Smartest man any day. <laughs> right. So number 12, Matt, would you rather get shit slapped in the face while trying to subdue a psych patient or have to give a bed bath to a patient with bed bugs? This is really tough. As much as I don't want to get shit on me, those bed bugs like give me like when I cringe when there's like critters walking around, mm -hmm. like patients' hairs. Uh, I'm I'm kind of adding to the story. I'm thinking about like maggots too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Those are different critters. Um, fudge, man. But in that case, I hate I hate bed bugs so much. I think it's just as nasty. Like I'll just take the the shit slapped oh my god but who knows where that shit came what kind of shit is it bro yeah it's gonna and, it's gonna suck man but at least the, i'll go clean it up i'll go change my yeah, scrubs but whatever goes in your eye though on your mouth or your nose like you know i so that's gonna get in your eye for sure and you're gonna taste it yeah i, I, I would go bed this bugs, is bro. just how much i like bed bug i how much i hate bed bugs i think i would go better because you could at least um like gown up and shit i know like you will it's, it's not bulletproof but then having shit, you know, going like your face and your, I can't do this shit to the face, dog. I can't do it. Yeah. Just so rather just keep me in the balls these, at that point, bro. Sometimes with these lice patients too, like after you, like you see these little things jumping around, like you feel like there's stuff crawling on you, even if you're out of the room too. So it's just such a like, yeah. uh, it's so true because that, cause I had it, we had a patient that like had bed bugs at like the, um, at their old nursing home, like a few months back. So he got cleared of it. But when a nurse brought that up, like the whole shift, like I was just being itchy. Like, I know there was no bed bugs there, but just like for some reason, the realization that the patient at one point had bed bugs, like everything's like itchy for some reason. Yeah. And the only thing that's worse than bed bugs is like I just mentioned earlier is those damn maggots when you have a homeless patient with a wound and you just pour hydrogen peroxide on the wound and those things just start like crawling out of the skin. Mm. It is nasty. You know, and and then you're the ones that are using the tweezers to take them out, and oh. it's just, ooh. You know what's worse than bed bugs? Getting shit slapped in your face. Yeah, <laughs> you're both just as bad, man, by a psych patient. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't do this shit in the face, bro. This one I'm gonna go with the uh, with the bed bugs, Matt. If it ever comes a situation where we need to switch because you think that this person is, if there's a situation where you just suspect bed bugs, and I suspect that I'm gonna get. Shit thrown in my face. We'll switch assignments. I think we switch assignments. Okay. Agreed. Would you rather love your hospital, pay coworkers and managers, and hate your city and your outside life of work, or would you rather hate your hospital, pay coworkers and managers, but love your city and life outside of work? I would. This is like a traveler's question. Yeah. I would rather hate my job than hate my life. I'd for sure hands hands out. Yeah. I'd rather deal with that twelve hour grueling everyone's a piece of crap managers don't like you and then have a happy outside of work life because that's kind of shows you that you probably have a really good work-life balance um and it, it just like if you're unhappy outside outside of work that's like your life that's that's like your life your, your work isn't your life a work is like your gift to society you could you could say and the life outside of work is like the gift you give to yourself what about you? Yeah, a hundred percent agree with mm -hmm. you. Plus, like, if if you're happy outside of work, at least you're radiating positivity in there. While these people hate you and they hate their lives anyway because they're probably shitty. Um, and it's even like a bad travel nursing contract, right? Like, let's just say in this one, it's not even that bad at all. Mm -hmm. But if it was worse and we're floating a lot, we hate it. At least we work those three twelves. We get out and we're enjoying our life, and that's all that matters. So we you could suck up the bad work environment. It's right. not that bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Matthew, number 14 here. Would you rather have spilled urine on your pants or trach sputum on your shirt? So I'll go with the trach sputum on my shirt. It's and you can't change. You can't like change your clothes at work because that's, that's cheating. Yeah, yeah. You got to do um, it the whole day, whole shift. Okay. Sputum still because mm -hmm. urine just stinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same yeah. thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Imagine if like you get it on your pants and a little bit in your shoe and you, get, you hear that. Bro, 
Yeah. Bro, so, uh, one time I had the Crocs uh, and I had uh, Zosin spill my Crocs mm. and threw into my sock. That thing is a stinker too, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. Zosin dude. smells like a mother. Hell yeah. I had that on my, like, I've, sometimes like when I would prime it, I would get a little bit on my glove and you could smell it right away. Like, it, like rotten eggs. Yeah, like you, you would never think it smells like that, you know, because not a lot of other antibiotics smell like that, but that one does. But definitely I'd rather get sputum on my shirt as well because sputum is sputum, but like urine, like you said, it could smell and I try to live that life. And I think like even though sputum is more nasty, like to me, like dealing with on a patient care basis, when it comes to it being on me, I'd rather deal with the sputum on me versus the urine. There's just something with... There's something nasty about urine on me. Yeah. It's okay if the patient's in the urine. I'll clean them up, man. Right? Yeah. I've, I've had like urine get on my forearm, you know, while I'm changing a person. And I've had sputum get on my forearm. But I had to wash it off. And to be honest, when it went on my forearm, I prefer the urine on my forearm than the sputum on my forearm for some reason. Because like looking at that, like that loogie, like yellow and gross, it's just like, yeah. God damn. And the urine, it's just like, it sucks. But like for some reason, like the urine didn't turn me off as much. But then it drips down and it covers your whole damn far. Yeah, true, right? This, this little drop in yeah. the circle. It's so gross. Yeah, we do with some nasty stuff in mm-hmm. nursing. Why do we tolerate it? It's know. funny stuff. Someone's got to do it. It's our, gift, it's our gift to the world, bro. All right, Pete. Would you rather have vomit in your hair and mouth or poop down your shirt? Damn. Like down my shirt, like when someone puts an ice cube down your shirt? Is that what you mean, down your shirt? Yeah, let's just call oh, it shit, that. dude. A vomit in your hair and mouth. My oh. mouth. I. Th- it's tough, this, man. This one's probably the toughest one so far. Yeah, it's gotta be. He's gotta be nasty, man. It's all. Yeah, it is. man. It I sucks. think I'd rather have vomit in my hair and mouth than poop down my down my shirt. But, but then shit, but it's I don't in your know, mouth. dude. It's, if, it's in your mouth, yeah. If the mouth wasn't there, I would definitely go with the vomit yeah. in your hair because it's whatever. It's vomit. But then like. Other person's vomit entering my yeah. mouth is just something I'd, super nasty. I'd for to sure think vomit. About. I'd vomit right at, right back at them for sure, <laughs> for sure. Like that vomit will go. What is that projectile vomiting called? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, fuck, the baby know. has it with the sphincter. I forget. I don't know. What's that uh, thing called uh, when they intubate you and they look for that one area in your in your mouth? They look for the th- thing. Oh, Esophagitis. Nah. They look at like they they say oh it's past the blank. The larynx. No. Esophagus. No, it's something. It's like a, it's like a marking point that that. Okay, people, vocal cords. No, it's like a marking point that people use for intubation. I, well, I was gonna say that. It's out of my pay grade. Yeah, bro. I was gonna say by the time that vomit in my mouth reaches that area, I'm probably already vomiting. So I'll, I'll probably just do the vomit in the hair and mouth because I'm gonna vomit right away. Yeah. What about you? But that, but that's in your so, mouth though. Versus poops is down your back. Yeah. So the way I see this Damn. is like now that I'm, you gave me some time to think. Is like okay, the poop down your shirt is nasty, but at least it's like not entering your body. Not entering my body. It's on my damn skin. Like how much times was I muddy or some shit happened? I just kind of like clean muddy my body. Huff. You're muddy, huh? Muddy, huh? I don't like, I mean, I can't remember the last time I rolled in dirt, bro. It's been a while. But. I mean, when I was a little kid, I probably shit my pants before. I probably went up my back, so it's probably like not a big deal. You know? Yeah, so I would just I'll just take a little poop down my shirt. Like it's okay. That vomit down the mouth is just crazy. Damn. Um, but then it, down your shirt. If it's down in my back, probably not as bad as my front because I have chest hair. And like, I can imagine that shit being hard yeah, to wash off my a chest lot of hair. Curling with hair there on yeah. your chest. Yeah, oh, man. All right, shit. Let's move on because this is gross. Uh, uh, Matt, number sixteen. Would you rather live the rest of your life as a Buddhist monk? Or be followed continuously by the paparazzi. So I know for a fact that when people ask me, like, would you go back to Poland and stuff? And I tell them I was raised on a farm and it's just very slow. And I like the, I'm a little bit addicted to the high paced lifestyle of America. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to survive up there on those mountains with those monks. I would just need some stimulation. So paparazzi is a school, is a cool stimulation for Mm -hmm. me. Like I'll just like, you know, flick, not flick them up, but like kind of brush them off mm-hmm. whenever they're they're around me. But I could handle that versus just complete silence of a monk. Yeah, I'm trying to think because I know I initially said that I'd rather have the paparazzi, but then like that whole monk situation probably wouldn't be that bad. But the thing is, like, you wouldn't have any of really of your like your friends. You wouldn't really have any contact with the outside world or any like females there. So that's like a, a little bit of Poor an issue. Females, huh? <laughs> but versus like the paparazzi, where if you have paparazzi, at least like. 
You can maybe famous. like <laughs> Yeah, yeah kind of get famous <laughs> I'm joking Yeah uh, I would probably rather the paparazzi Just because like you said The whole pole thing Like if I was to be a farmer in Poland I probably wouldn't do it So if I can't be a farmer in Poland How the hell am I going to be a monk In the mountains, you know It would be tough But you never know Because what if like you try it out And it's more It's like the most Most like Love you've ever felt in your life more Or the most Or blissfulness, blissfulness yeah. yeah Because maybe they like Because you brought up You brought up stimulation So what if Like they're so little stimulation there where someone's so small makes you feel so good right you know we don't know we don't know we gotta get a monk on here we have to go visit Damn. yeah i mean we could handle both like yeah and that's why these are such polar questions and it's hard to answer because i enjoy my my quietness and my peace right personally you're the you're you are always louder so i like you know we're already polar opposites there but at you know this situation mm. i think i'll do the paparazzi come, come take yeah. some photos of me yeah because when it comes to like like to one of the other questions, like number six or something that we talked about. Um, I feel like being a monk in, a, in the mountains, you wouldn't be able to make as big of an impact on the world versus like being fellow paparazzi because you could maybe just, even though life would really, really, really suck <coughs> being followed, but you, but you can maybe at least take some of that negative and make it into a positive where you can maybe make a better outcome. Broadcast in, in the world. it out yeah, there, yeah. Right? It would definitely be tough being a famous person. Like just thinking about it, like geez, like any you, grocery store, any small thing that you do, there's just so much like um. Like just imagine background eating dinner. behind you. Yeah. Imagine eating dinner and you have a, like a you're you're forking down a meal and you let have a f- food on your fork and somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, take a picture." And then they then they say, "Hold on, put your fork down and, and pose for me while I take a picture." Right. Like it. Like yeah. Like you probably it'll feel good in the beginning because you're like, "Damn, people are recognizing me." But then it's like it reaches a certain point where like you're just trying to have some time with your friends and family, and like you can't. Be tough. Yeah, be tough. Tough. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of chatting about some would you rather. If you guys like these shows episodes. Give us a five star smash and give us a like. That's what motivates us to keep on producing this high quality content. And we shall see you on the next one. Thank you so much, guys. Peace out.